Anyways, hi, Joey. Hey, Kendra. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Good. It's so good to see you. We're going to figure out this technology sooner than later, huh? It'll be good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, hey, you guys, we just want to welcome you to the King's Table. I'm Kendra with All For Him Ministries, and this is Pastor Joey with One Church. And um, we are coming to you live tonight, and we've been having such a fun time gathering at the King's Table and talking about various topics and bringing up discussions, and you guys, we want you to participate along with us, and so we are just building this, and so we're going to put in the, um, the chat down here, we're going to give you a link so that you can actually register to be part of our webinars, because we want you to be part of them so that you can be asking us questions and ask your questions live as we are... Um, you know, Gavin ourselves, right, Joey? That's right. Come on. Yeah. And then you can ask us like Q&A and see if we have the ability to answer that. But um, so we're getting there. So tonight you can just answer or ask questions down below. And um, we have an awesome friend with us tonight who is helping answer those questions and facilitate those to us. So anyways, interact with us, right? <laughs> yeah. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, we're still working on identity and we're talking about um, just different ways of identifying our identity and looking at our identity. And so um, Pastor Joy is going to release a word to us tonight. Um, he's calling it, will it? Will it. Will it. That's so right. can I pray for you really quick before we do this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Father God, we just thank you for Pastor Joey and the gifting that he has just to release your heart, your wisdom, and Lord, that he just takes scripture and just um, just speaks it so well that we can just apply it to our lives. And so I pray for an anointing over him as we're here tonight hanging at the King's table. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, yeah. So tonight, I just want to take some time and really uh, focus on... Um, as we've been talking about identity, recognizing how your identity, once you know that you are uh, founded, is founded in Jesus, and um, once you recognize where your identity com comes from, how it really affects the way that you can operate through life with your will uh, or your emotions. Because that's the only two ways you get through your day, right? Either uh, with your will in the morning yep. when the alarm clock uh, goes off, either you get up out of bed or your emotions let you know I'm way too tired and you hit the snooze, right? I mean, from the from get go, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm the guy that has like the built in five minutes. Like, you know, I, as soon as it goes off, I'm like, I know I've got five minutes. That way I don't even have to take the, the energy to hit a snooze. Yeah, exactly. And, um, but it, it's like that for all of us. And, and some people are more, uh, operate more in the realm of uh, their emotions through how they get through the day and how they get through life. And some people operate much more in uh, the, the will side of things. And so I want to get into that tonight, especially. Uh, uh, Oops, sorry. That was me. It's okay. <laughs> especially from the side of things, looking at uh, King David, right? Because uh, here's a guy um, that was a phenomenal example in scripture that there was moments where he operated in his emotions and there's moments where he operated within his will. And I love that the Bible gives us honest people, real people, not just something kind of fake that you can't attain to or, or be like, right? right. And so uh, 1 Samuel 30 is really where I want to look. And there's a, um, a few verses here. I'm reading from New Living Translation. This is 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1. We're going to stop in verse 8. Uh, and so I'll give you some context for this verse after we read through it. Okay, it says five days Bible. later. Say what now? I was gonna say, so people need to get their digital Bibles out or get their Bibles out. Yeah, get your digital. If you don't have your Bible, though, oh my gosh, come on, people. We'll stop you quick and pray for all the people that don't have their Bibles. I, I'm trying to get my Bible out, and my, my phone keeps talking to me, Joy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it's not behaving, so I'm gonna get my Bible. Yeah, smartphones. Who needs them? Going away. That's right. This is what it says. We're going to start in verse one. Three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziklag, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and Ziklag. They had crushed Ziklag and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, uh, Ahinoam and Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk of stoning him. 
but David found strength in the Lord is God. Let's read that part again. But David found strength in the Lord is God. Highlight that, underline it, make a star, whatever you want to do. Verse 7, then he said to Abathar the priest, bring me the ephod. So Abathar brought it to him. Then David asked the Lord, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. This is a passage in scripture where I am, uh, one of the things you want to do when you're reading scripture, and it's a story like this, do everything within your power to engage your imagination, to put you in that place. Mm. Now, to give some context to this, uh, where David and his men had just come from, they had gone out uh, to help um, King Achish, uh, who was a king uh, from the Philistines. And David, uh, having run from uh, King Saul, was taking up refuge there. And that's why he's in Ziklag, because the king had given him that area. And so there was going to be a fight between the Philistines and Israel, and David and his men were going out to help, but um, the other commanders and the Philistines didn't feel comfortable having David there, feeling like he was going to turn on them and it was a ploy. And so uh, the king asked him to return back to his home. So you're looking at what have been from where they traveled to. Uh, it would have been 50 miles there, a three-day journey, and then it would have been a 50-mile, three-day journey back. Uh, to their homes. Hmm. So imagine this, uh, this scenario where they're, they're, they're uh, exhausted. They've been rejected. They went out to help. They've been rejected. All these men are following David because they believe in him. They trust in him. And in the distance, as they're getting close to home, they see the smoke uh, clouds in the sky. Um, their hearts begin to race. Uh, these are guys that know what a pillage village looks like. And they get closer and closer. And their worst uh, um, worst dreams become reality. And so everybody imagine these men rushing to their homes, uh, rushing to where their families and where their kids would be playing. And you, you, you have to, if you don't do this with scripture, if you just read it flippantly, then you can't ever understand there can be zero empathy and you miss so much what scripture will teach. So you're smelling the ash. You're you're, you're, you're running through what were once streets filled with children playing and chasing each other. And now it's empty and there's nobody there. There's no dead bodies. And so it's one thing if they're dead bodies, cause you can mourn the loss, but now you have the realization that your wife is not dead, but mm -hmm. she is captured by another man with mm -hmm. not good intentions. Your children, uh, their plans for them just to be slaves for the rest of their life. And so everybody, when it says they wept until they could weep no more, that one sentence gives you about all the information you need to get the state of mind of where these people are at. And so when we start talking about you having a will and you also have emotions in life, I wanted to get to a very raw example of that because I'm passionate about this and understanding when we know our identity in God, how it affects how we operate. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be things that happen in life where it brings you to a point where you cry till you can cry no more, right? Yeah. Um, life's like that, uh, regardless of how good your plan is to mm -hmm. navigate um, life, uh, whether it's within your marriage or your company or uh, your children, whatever it is, there's just things that take wrong turns. Uh, Mike Tyson, he always had a saying, uh, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth, yeah. right? And, yeah. and, 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 and we all do until something that catches us off guard. So you've got this moment where these are men that would follow David anywhere. And now the men that would follow him anywhere are whispering the idea about of maybe we should stone him and kill him. Wow. This is his fault. So David's not only grieving the loss of his, his wives being taken, but the men whom he loves, whom he feels responsible for now saying, well, you know what? not only are we sad, but we're upset at you. Mm -hmm. and, and the rumors uh, of, of murdering David are on, on, on everybody's lips. And it says, it, it strikes me, there's, there's this sentence where it says, they talked about stoning David, but David found strength and the Lord is God. Uh, that word for strength is uh, is Hebrew word called uh, hazak. Uh, become strong, it means to strengthen, prevail, to harden, 
to, to be courageous, right? I love the statement of courage is, is um, it's not the absence of fear, but pressing on in spite of it, you know, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of versions of that, but here's David and he's having to, in this moment, make himself, will himself strong um, in the Lord is God, not in himself, mm -hmm. not in his men, not in his accolades. Because remember, at this point in life, there's already, already been the songs made about David, Saul has killed his thousands, and David, his tens of thousands. All of his victories didn't mean anything that day. He couldn't strengthen himself and his successes, mm -hmm. right? And there's, the, listen, there's people, we try to do that. Like when life punches us in the face, sometimes we, we run to our past successes to try to give us encouragement. We, 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 our emotions will push us to do weird things. And so there's a couple of things I'm looking at of the will that, that when we engage our will, here, here's a couple of things. First thing is this, your will engages wisdom, but emotion engages reactions, right? Your will engages wisdom, but emotion re engages reactions. David's uh, wisdom in this moment, knowing that his identity is in God. Uh, and how do we know that David knows his identity in God? You look at Psalm 139, and I mean, it's like a master class in writing a song. And, and, and the words he writes are this, as the psalmist, David writes this, you made me, uh, you made me all the delicate, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Here's a man that he knows his identity is in God. Mm -hmm. And with his will, he uses wisdom to say, I don't have anything, but I better strengthen myself in the Lord. And he goes and he gets the ephod. This would have been a priestly thing uh, that David was doing. He was going to get wisdom from God. God, what do I need to do here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not running to what his men would think to do or what he thinks everybody else wants him to do. Like, there's a lot of leadership decisions I've made based off what I felt other people wanted me to do rather yeah. than going and, and saying, okay, God, do we chase these guys down or not? Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and your emotions will cause you to do that. Your emotions will cause you to react then without thinking, and, you know, and sometimes it could get you to the same destination using wisdom and the reaction of your emotions can sometimes get you to the same destination, but it'll cause you to take vastly different courses to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when some people say there's like this uh, statement of you can be wrong, right? You know, uh, you can be right about something, but do it the wrong way. And so your will, uh, it engages wisdom, but emotion engages reactions. We want to be people that engage wisdom. Um, the second thing is this, and I, I know I'm going through this quick, but I don't have time to talk because I think there's a lot of uh, stuff worth talking about here. The second thing is this, your will relinquishes pride, but emotion relinquishes honor. Let me say it again, your will relinquishes pride, but emotion relinquishes honor. Your will can say, listen, I, I, David had to humble himself. Pride cannot be a part of his life in this moment. He had to relinquish the pride with his will, choose to let it go yep. and say, God, I need to be strong in you. Right now, emotion relinquishes honor. And how do we know that? Because <clears throat> all of his men were emotional and the man they had always honored. They were now speaking about killing, you know, like emotion honors out the window. Um, it's, it's, it's funny how the enemy knows what buttons to press in our lives. Um, it's funny how our days can change. You can start out with a great day and all the enemy has to do is press the button of emotion <laughs> and switch up your day, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, of our, because of our will, here's the, here's the reality. And I've learned this a lot being uh, just a pastor and, and, and having struggles in ministry. Um, with my will, I can celebrate the success of others. Um, and with my will, I can embrace lessons from my losses. Um, with my will, right? I can embrace the lessons from my losses and learn from those things. I can celebrate the victories of others. With my emotions, I've come to find this. Rarely can I celebrate others. I'll often only celebrate my success with my emotions. Um, and I'll, with my emotions, or normally will try to learn from the losses of others rather than my own losses. Mm. Because um, 
when you get emotional about things, sometimes to celebrate somebody else, you feel like devalues you if you don't know where your identity yeah, is. So true. We can celebrate other people and completely have our own. I mean, you can be going through a hard part in life. I mean, as a pastor, my church can be struggling and I can celebrate the church down the road that just had 20 salvations. And it doesn't take anything away from me because it doesn't have anything to do with my identity, mm -hmm. right? My identity was already established. He knew me before I was born, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, at the moment of creation, value is established. Mm -hmm in my identity and um so david's men were ready to take him out man their emotions boom they 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 dismissed with honor because of their emotions um man you know i i, I can't i can't imagine what that would be like to have your closest people to say man we don't have your back anymore finally this uh, the third thing is uh will finishes the race and emotion only begins the race uh, will finishes the race. Emotion only begins the race. Um, pain is like one of the biggest trump cards of emotions, right? Um, yeah. Because <laughs> I've seen people having uh, laughing, uh, having great times, and something painful occurs. Bad news, uh, a bad report, um, a car wreck. Uh, you know, it pain is the trump card uh, for emotions um and when emotion guides our life pains often the wall that will stop progress being made mm -hmm. and, and the enemy is defeated but he's not dumb and so he uses pain often to stop any progress that we have set up especially when we live by our emotions um but when you operate out of your will you can submit your pain to jesus and james one says what it says that uh, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. So when I'm using my will, pain is now something submitted to Jesus that I can take joy in yeah. because it's only going to bring about his good work in my life. And so see how it operates differently. Like, you know, uh, and so if, if we don't, if we don't ever take time to talk about this part of it, that there's so many well-meaning believers that are emotionally immature, um, and they're being driven around all day long by their emotions. And he loves it because mm -hmm. he doesn't care if you emotionally get excited at church. If you hear a great sermon, it stirs you up and you know, amen and obedience is not the same thing, right? We've talked about that. Um, so you can get emotionally excited. I don't think the devil cares one bit if you get excited at church um, because emotion oftentimes will start the race of you saying, yeah, this week it's going to be different. And this week I, I feel so excited about it. But then when Monday morning punches you in the mouth, you're like, okay, well, maybe not today. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to follow through with whatever God spoke to me today because I just don't, it just doesn't feel right today. Mm -hmm. um, but with your will, you can consider it all joy when you encounter the pain of various trials and say, no, man, in God's hands, something special is about to happen. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah, how does it hit you? Well, that, you know, just what you were saying is in trials, like, um, consider it all joy. Like that's really hard as a, as a human being, right. To wrap your head around <laughs> that. <laughs> um, but it is crazy because, you know, in the midst of that, when we engage our will and we fight the good fight with our eyes on Jesus, um, we can rest on his promises that he'll take all things and turn them to good for those whose eyes are upon him. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, I, you know, I always call those, those times in life, it's like a sucker punch. And, you know, sometimes you get beat down and, and you get back up. And I always think your character is being built. I'm always looking at the glass half full. I know that drives cra people crazy sometimes, but I'm like, everything in life is intentional to build our character and to help us get stronger. But there's seasons in your life where you get sucker punched and they come from nowhere and you really have to dig deep. And I have come through a couple of those in my life. And I feel like those are like the moments where I really, ha I mean, just to be totally transparent, you're like, is this worth it? You know, and are you really worth it? And, and, and that's what the enemy would love for us to doubt or to question. And I know that that's him going, oh yeah, see, see, if God was God, this wouldn't have happened. And, um, and then yet I can say, because God is God. You know, and it's so true. It's where you stand back in and, and you just, you stand on the promises of God. You stand on who he is. You engage your will to say, I don't feel like 
getting up today. I don't feel like leading worship. I don't feel like reading my word, but we know that when we engage our spirit and we, and we just say, but I'm going to, and it's, you know, I was thinking about when you were talking, um, just that battle. Can you imagine like walking back into that city? Like just how you said that reading the scriptures and when you're reading the Bible to put yourself into that, that's such a great wisdom, Joey, because sometimes like I hear people say all the time, well, it's just mundane and I'm not, you know, I don't remember everything. It's like, okay, so you're totally not reading it right. <laughs> like, because if you really grasp what's being shared in history and stuff, it's intense and graphic and it's real life. And um, yeah, so even, I, I was just thinking about that, that city and I don't know why, but did you ever see the Wonder Woman, the new Wonder Woman that came out? Yeah. Okay, so do you remember when she's down in the um, trenches and they're like, you can't go over, you're gonna die. And she just got this, um, look in her eye like you guys are all crazy we're gonna win this is what we were created for no we have to go take it and it and and engaging will makes me think of that when I saw that movie I was like blown away because I didn't think there was there's so many messages inside of that you know but I remember that moment when she was like looking at everybody like you guys are crazy we don't have an option we're going because we're gonna win we're taking back this ground <laughs> and I love that about that movie and I always remember that imagery of yeah, that's how it has to be. I mean, she was, she just knew who she was. She knew what her call was. She knew what her purpose was. And granted, it's a movie, but that's how God wants us to warrior up and to, to just stay engaged in the purpose and the call and whose we are, because you're so right. Um, when you stay focused and you engage your will, God always gives you the wisdom and the nuggets that you need in order to walk this out without the emotions. You know, I, um, was talking with a client today at speaking about will and emotion and they were panicking a little bit about some things that were going on in the markets. And I said, well, that's why you have me. So I can bring some wisdom to you, <laughs> you know, and sometimes you just need wisdom to speak into the chaos to calm yeah. yourself down and bring yourself back to, because the enemy loves for us to be out of order in our emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and chaos is the exact right word. I mean, yeah. Uh, there couldn't be a better example of the moment where you're talking about today because wisdom in that moment is let's breathe. Yeah. Let's look at, cause you, you have a history of understanding how things fluctuate and work and, and all that. And, and, and people that are, are noobs at it, there's like, you know, Oh, oh my God, you know, it's, it's all going to burn to the ground. You know, <laughs> like, I'm being distorted by milk and bread, you know? And yes, so, yes. um, yeah, you know what we had to do is bring him back to the facts. We had to bring him back to the reality of things. And, and I think that's what engaging your will does. It brings you back to, okay, let's bring some truth into what's really happening or going on. Absolutely. I mean, because this is where David is. When he, his only retreat, you could say, was going to the Lord. But the reality is he was a man. And so his retreat could have been a lot of things. Mm -hmm. His retreat could have been to fall on his sword. Guys, I have failed you all. Mm -hmm that's not going to bring anybody back. No. <laughs> it's like, right. I have, to, you know, um, there, there has to be, and, and this is where um, a devotional life is, is, is pretty critical. Uh, and having people to hold you accountable in life is pretty critical. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of times I'll ask my wife, um, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say, listen, I want to, I want to just bounce something off of you. Does this sound like an emotional reaction? Does this sound, you yeah. know, um, is, is there wisdom to this or because I, the thing I know enough about myself is I'm an emotional person. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it could be a game of Uno. Um, it could be March Madness. It could be, <laughs> you know, I, I get invested in things quickly and, you know, um, and that's kind of fun and it's kind of awesome, but it can't be to live by that. Yeah. Recreationally, it's great, but lifestyle, it's death. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and so what I want to make sure we understand tonight is uh, you and I, neither one of us are saying, hey, you can't be emotional. No. Like, it's not like we're saying you got to be robots and how you live life, you know, and if you see a cute puppy, you can't say, oh, you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not referencing that at all. Like, emotions are also a beautiful thing. Um, they, they bring so much flavor to life, but you can't be managed by them. Yes. Um, and so that's why, you know, oftentimes, even on like a format like Facebook tonight where people are engaging and watching, sometimes, you know, I have to step back from it, especially when something maybe nationally or globally has happened 
that everybody wants to just voice, 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 voice. Um, you know, it, it was, it was, I guess a few weeks ago. I don't know I, I, um, exactly when it was, but man, great sermon by uh, Stephen Furtick was, um, he was talking about how we have a generation uh, that makes comments and doesn't have conversation. Mm. And, um, and so that ability to, to, to communicate. And so a lot of times emotions are just comments, comments, comments. And so having somebody that can, you can, you know, hold your feet to the fire and you can say, Hey, here's something I'm thinking. Is this just emotional or is this wisdom? You know? Yes. yes. Uh, and again, it can get you to <clears throat> the same place when my kids do something to push my buttons uh, and it's genuinely wrong. My emotions want to bring about correction and my will want to bring about correction. Mm -hmm. But if I use my will, I'm going to get there the right way. Right. And the lesson is going to be learning. If I use my emotions, they might still get a, a, a timeout or a bottom smack, but it's going to happen all the wrong way, you know? Right. And so, um, but it's the small things and we can't let the small things go. Like when we're going to, for me right now, I'm just working through changing the way I even eat as a lifestyle. I am an emotional leader. Like, and, and often with celebrations, if something awesome happens, I'm like, it's time to go get frozen yogurt. You know? yes, I do know. We talked about this, Joey, that we are yeah. a lot like that. Yeah. We celebrate around treats. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and society does. If you want to know how much food is in society, go on a seven day fast and just watch commercials. I and know. Like, Everything is food related. Seriously. And, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's that emotional thing. And so I'm having to engage my will almost daily when it comes to, okay, here's the choice I'm making now. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that has really opened my eyes to, man, there was a lot of immaturity in how I was operating. Uh, I would say, you know, and, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I said every now and then I want to reference a really good book to check out. Uh, if you can get your hands on, uh, emotionally spiritual, um, help, uh, emotionally spiritual, um, gosh, this is awesome. Pete Scazzaro is the guy's name. <laughs> Pete um, he's, he's got a book called the emotionally healthy church. Um, emotionally healthy spirituality. That's what it is by Pete Scazzaro. Um, that is really <clears throat> one of the things he discusses. A lot of times our ability to grow spiritually is uh, limited by our emotional maturity, mm. um, you know, and so we, it's stuff we've got to deal with. And, and, you know, it's like, well, what does this all have to do with identity? Well, you know, when my identity is pretty solid in God, um, I don't have to freak out when things go south because he's the king of kings. If my finances are getting tight, um, I don't have to freak out because uh, he's the one that's got cattle on a thousand hills, right? You know, um, there's, there's, there's a peace and security I find for my identity in him as, as his son. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, if you don't ever face it, if you don't ever face it, you're overly emotional. And, and listen, if you're an emotional person, that's fantastic. But, but don't blame who you are on the generations before you just say, well, my family's always been hot tempered. And so I'm hot tempered. No, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason you're hot tempered. Uh, I always shoot off at the mouth if somebody is rude to me. Well, there's a reason, you know? And so why is that? And ask yourself those questions. But, um, man, it's really easy at the end of the day to step back and say, how many of my decisions were emotional based and how many of my decisions were legal based? Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times I'm when my when my days are more will based, I might be a little bit more um, physically and mentally spent, but I'm more emotionally full. It's funny. And when my decisions are more emotional based, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I might not be as physically spent, but I'm not as emotionally full. Right. Right. Um, it's just interesting how it works that way. Well, and I think also um, you know just knowing who knowing that you're a child of God and that um, we have full access to him and all his wisdom and resources. And, you know, I know when I'm coming through a season, um, you know, even just coming through really like quick transitions or needing to make definitive decisions. I can't tell you how grateful I am that I just say, God, I need you to tell me what the answer is. And, yeah. and I know he will, because he's going to show me either in a dream or a vision, or he's going to show me in, um, through scripture you know, to know that you know 
that God sees you and he's going to answer your questions. To know that we're his and that's his heart's desire brings so much peace because you can take a, a lot of the emotion out because it's not an emotional decision. It's just like, what do you want, God? And when you tell me, I'll do it. And I know there are times in my life where, um, where like it's been absolutely chaotic and I've just had to be still and say, God, what do you want? And you, what you want is all I'm going to do. And I remember him challenging me one time because I was really like, like kind of like bantering with God, <laughs> you know, how you do sometimes. Is that, is that really you? And I remember him saying, are you going to serve man or are you going to serve me? And it was like, girl, make a choice. And I thought you and you alone, God, there's no question. So whatever you're asking me to do, I will do. And I'll tell you what, Joey, stepping into that and just being obedient in that, it's like, it's like doors open up and there's this fresh freedom that you don't have to worry. Cause you know, um, I've said this before, but you don't know, have to know why God said it. You just have to know that he said it. Yeah. And then you walk it out in faith, knowing that if he said it, it's good. And you know, sometimes people say, well, how do you know that it's God? Well, because he'll say something to you and you journal it. Like I've been making notes tonight. And I think back to the, remind me about the journal thing, because you had a great idea, but um, you journal it. And then you wait. And I always say, let it be confirmed through a couple different things. Can I tell you a crazy story yeah. that happened this week? Um, and then remind me about the journal because I want to come back to that. So here's a cool story. So we're talking about the ministry platform. We've been praying about the name, right? And we were talking about, should we switch it or not? And should we change it up? And like, God, what do you want? And so we put some suggestions out there and you guys were actually going to ask you, cause um, we're going to, I want to take a poll cause we have some really great ideas, but we want your feedback on this um, this tagline. But anyways, we were talking about it being against the enemy. Right. And, um, so in the week we had some, we were just dialoguing, like, is that the right name? Are we making sure we're glorifying God? Is this a good testimony to share? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. So this is so cool. So we got done with our call and I was really last week, our team meeting. And I was like, Oh man, Lord, like, I don't want to be confused at all. Like, I just want to, like, I want to step where you tell me to step. I want to do what you tell me to do. So I'm going to give this to you because I really, this is a name that is yours. Um, I felt like we were going to do against the enemy as the platform, but we had some questions that came up and they were so good. So anyway, so we tabled it and I just said, God, tell me it's your ministry, whatever you want. I just want to be obedient. We're just here to, to be the, the hands and feet on, on earth. <laughs> and so, so I'm talking to this beautiful woman on Wednesday who is, um, they've asked me to come down to Arizona to do a women's event. We're talking about it and we're finishing up with the conversation. And she says, Hey, Kendra, um, I need to tell you something. And she said, you know, I go to these women's ministries and, um, we see, we go to these art fairs. And when we go to the art fairs, we set up these tables and we come in the capacity of God's a creator and you're his perfect masterpiece. And she yeah. said, so we really pray up because we know we're going into the marketplace. And she said, and we know we're in, um, it's not a, you know, faith-based thing. It's just the marketplace. And she said, and so I pray to God will give me the specific table and um, that every person comes through. She's like, there's tens of thousands of people that come through. And she's like, we're really just out there, you know, spreading, sharing the gospel. And she said, but I want you to know that every day that I go do this, anytime I go to ministry, she said, I put on my against the enemy t-shirt that I bought from you a couple of years ago because there's anointing. And she said, and I feel like that shield over my heart, like it's a protection. She said, I feel like I put on my armor wow. and then I put on my rest of my clothes. And so she said, I do ministry with against the enemy underneath my clothes every time. Wow, that's is that, cool. Is that powerful? Okay. So here I am like, Lord, answer this. If this is a tool that's going to equip people to walk in their authority mm -hmm. and a conversation like why that Wednesday what was it Thursday or Wednesday I'm um, sorry I'm looking at Nicole because she was here because I was freaking out because <laughs> I'm like look at what Jesus just did to confirm just to say girl I see you here's here's a validation that what I and you know the Lord gave us that 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 brand um and so we've just been waiting for the right time so to me, that's how Papa God works. You know, I come to him and I say, God, I'm not going to make an emotional decision. It's not my brand. It's not my ministry. It's yours. We're here to facilitate what you want us to do. Just give us the direction. Yeah. Man, that brings so much peace because yeah. then I don't have to get all hyped up and angst out if it's going to be the right decision or the wrong one. I'm just like, Lord, you tell us, we'll do, you know, yeah. and when you can get to that place because you know that Papa God is good and that he will, he, his desires and his plans for you are for good, that you truly can 
walk in just this peace. You don't have to get all rallied up that you can walk in this balance yet get excited. You know, like yeah. you said, I was, I was like freaking out. Yeah. Excited. But anyway, that's a great testimony, right? Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's I mean, asking God, what do you want? Yeah. And, and it's, you know, I think it's great too, to have a point in your life where you can say that, you know, there's moments where I acknowledge when I'm emotional about something with God. Yeah. God, I feel this way. I feel emotional. I think this is the decision. I think this is the choice, but I'm emotional, you know, and whatever the emotion is, angry, excited, whatever, yep. um, because I'm trying to, to even get away. If something seems good, do it. Um, but I'm also trying to trust that I'm a co-laborer with him, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and he's given me the mind of Christ and wisdom of God. But when there's things that, I, that I'm recognizing, emotions playing a big part in, I, you know, listen, I'm saying a lot of stuff tonight, but I'm chief among sinners when it comes to getting to the end of the day and my emotions have won the war. Um, and so I don't want anybody to think that, you know, man, he's trying to act like it's all together because it's not. Mm -mm. Um, but there's a beauty in scripture when it says his mercies are new every morning. Amen. And being able to hit the reset button and say, man, today was not so good, but tomorrow there comes a, a, a new opportunity and, um, and seizing that opportunity. And, um, and you know, and so uh, tonight, I, I think even if you're watching this, if somebody's watching this and you're like, today was the day where you blew it, um, you know, you got in a fight with somebody uh, and then you chase that fight with uh, a couple of Krispy Kremes <laughs> and, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong. There's an anointing on Krispy Kremes when right. the time is right. Um, but, you know, but things can just snowball and you get to the end and you just feel bad about yourself and how you responded and what you did. And, man, there's God's grace is more than enough. And so tomorrow's a new day. And so you just uh, approach it all the same. Say, okay, God, I'm giving this to you. Guide me, direct me, uh, you know. And so, and, and I oftentimes throughout the day, I have to get back and, um, kind of course correct because I I'm really being an emotional person I can deviate plans quickly mm -hmm. and so I have to have some things in my life that can kind of uh, bring me back whether it's you know um, a scripture that I'll keep in my phone that I can look at or um, sometimes even a piece of clothing uh, like that lady you know th there's, it's funny you can you can have things you can be intentional about the things you put in your life they can be just small reminders and just course corrections you know yeah. Yeah, one of the things you said, Joey, that I thought was good, that might be an action that you all could take away from this tonight, and maybe even um, in your journal for the next seven days until we meet again, um, you were saying, Joey, like, to be mindful of the emotion versus the will. Mm -hmm. And a great way to do that is to take a piece of paper and write emotion on one side and will on the other, and then reflect on your day and not beat yourself up. Just, this is like an exercise in growing in who you are, and say, um, okay, that person pulled out in front of me. Did I act emotionally or did I act, did I control myself and, and uh, act, respond in love? So, um, so it's just a great mind check. It's a great response check. It's a great emotional check. It's just a great way to see, are you walking, are you emotionally responding to things? Or are you walking in wisdom? Um, um, and I think what you might find is that there might be some common things on things. And then the cool part about that is then you could go back and go, wow, why do I respond this way every time this comes up? Mm -hmm. And then those are those areas, you guys, that um, God is showing you that you that he wants to bring some um, freedom to. So if you consistently are frustrated, you know, at something or you're seeing yourself respond a specific way when something happens, that's awesome because that just is a, an opportunity to kind of drill into and figure out why you do that. And then you have permission and you get the opportunity to switch that, that you would respond differently. And that's part of figuring out your identity. Cause a lot of times when we respond emotionally, like we don't want to, it's because we believe something about ourselves. It's not true. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, and that's not overkill to do this. Like, no. you know, I've got an app on my phone right now that I can use to track uh, what I'm uh, consuming in the day and what the different breakdown of the food looks like. And there's people that you've got watches on that are counting how many steps that you've taken and when to stand up and move some more, you know, and yeah. uh, there's stuff we implement all the time. And this, it might be abnormal to um, what you usually do. Um, but if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. Right. And so do something a little bit abnormal and you may think, man, this sounds overkill. 
nobody thinks entering their food into a, a health app is weird anymore. Right. Nobody, nobody even gives it a second thought. Right. Um, and so having the opportunity where you just say, I'm going to write that down, you know, um, it's, it, it can, it can be eye opening. You don't have to do it for six months or a year. Uh, I, I guarantee you at the end of three days, you'll have a pretty good idea of perhaps what times a day you're more emotional, mm -hmm. uh, what times of day, what moments you're uh, more easily able to engage your will, mm -hmm. uh, the people that you're around, that might trigger emotion-based or will-based decision-making, you know? Um, so it's, it's, I tell you what, you know, in this area of the country, man, having a good hunting dog's important. And so <laughs> it helps you find things, you know? And so uh, the, the, that tool is, man, it's a good hunting dog. It'll help you get somewhere and help you find what you need to find. Well, you guys, it's been so much fun hanging out with you tonight. Is there any questions that you might have as we're kind of finishing up? Joey, anything you have that you want to charge people with as we're heading out tonight? Yeah. Pump the brakes on how hard you get on yourself. Some people uh, that watch these kind of videos, uh, they'll, they'll beat themselves up to it. Our prayer is that you're encouraged. Amen. But if you're at the end of this video and you feel like the weight of the world, that's not Jesus. And so, uh, so recognize condemnation puts you in a box. Um, it, it just, it just locks you up in shame. Uh, and that's not what we're about. Um, conviction sets you free. Mm -hmm. And so if you're feeling conviction, man, roll with that and move with that. But if you're feeling the weight of the world, that's not Jesus. So you need to pump the brakes and say, okay, God, I just invite you in for peace right now. Help me, help me consume what I need to out of this teaching and let go of what, what, what's not good. Mm -hmm. You know, let me uh, let go of what's not even you, you know? So, um, you know, just uh, that would be my uh, encouragement tonight uh, to, to those that are really uh, hard on themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just say, I would tailor to that and just say, um, give grace to yourself that you're seen, you're loved, you're valuable, you were created for a purpose. And um, our heart is that we come and just remind you that, um, that you are a valuable child of God. And um, that we just, I don't know, we just love to encourage you to, to just continue to walk strong and to know that um, you're not alone. And That's right. We want to come alongside of you along with the Lord and we know he is with us, but we want to come alongside of you too, you guys. So um, we'd love to connect with you on any of our Facebook, uh, Kendra for him. You can connect there. We've got three private groups that we are uh, partnering with where uh, we do some mentoring and developing to the lifestyle that Joey's talking about health and wellness, financial, biblical finance. Uh, we also coach to uh, the Ministry Well House and helping you understand your identity, hear about the voice of God, learning to understand your Bible, how we're equipping you to be a warrior in the kingdom and just to live life strong. And then we're also coaching and developing in the marketplace. And if you're an entrepreneur or love to develop product or just need somebody to network with to help encourage you to keep moving forward, we have some influence there too. So we just want to invite you to join our community to be a part. We're going to meet you at the King's table every Wednesday night. And um, we're going to invite some other people to come with us and to hang out. And um, because we just love to network and, and come together and just learn about the heart of the father and what he has. And so we'll keep resourcing you guys come along with us. We just, uh, we kind of feel like we're on this really fun journey and we'd love to have you in that process. Yes, right. indeed. <laughs> well, do you want to pray over us before we head out? Yeah, so God, thank you for the opportunity to have such a cool venue to be able to love on people. And so Lord, I just thank you right now that everybody that's watching that would see this, whether now or later on even, they would feel your peace, they'd feel your love, they'd feel your grace. And uh, Lord, it would almost just fall like a blanket right now on every single person that would be watching. I thank you the rest of the righteous be sweet. Tonight would be a restful night, no matter what big decisions life holds, or no matter what the day has uh, had for us. God, I thank you right now that uh, it would be a, a wonderful evening, a wonderful season that we're going to walk into and see great fruit produced in this season by your grace and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Bless you. And have a great night, sis. I will. You too. I'll talk to you soon. God yeah. bless. Bye, you guys.